All right, here we go. Chapter two review, part one. And I'll focus this camera in just a minute. There we go. All right, a car is traveling east at 25 meters per second at some instant. If its acceleration is 0 0.75 meters per second squared due east, find its velocity after 8.50 seconds have elapsed. So, one thing to note about all the problems on this test is that I think there's only one thing to know about the equations. This equation is only used for constant velocity. This is constant velocity only. So basically, the problem we're looking at right now is not going to utilize this equation. It must be something else. And that's because they talk about acceleration. They straight up say acceleration is 0 0.750 meters per second squared. So that indicates that we're using one of our other four equations. Let's see what else is told. Uh, one of the easy ones, well, let's look at these two right here. This is, this is a velocity of some kind, so let's label it. They say it's traveling east at 25.0 meters per second. I know that that's velocity because it is written in meters per second. This is written in meters per second, but let's say for now that we don't know what type of velocity. Then they say find velocity after 8.50 seconds. So we're also looking for velocity. And time is given 8.50 seconds. So what do we think? Are they asking us, they say find its velocity after 8.50 seconds. Are we trying to find VF or VO? Please use the chat. No one knows we're all gonna get this one wrong on the test. Very good, oh, it just took a second to load. Y'all got it, thank you so much. We're looking for VF because they say after 8.50 seconds. What's the velocity after this time? So this 25 must be at the beginning of the time. So we find the equation that has all four of these, and that'll be the top equation here. Vf equals 25 plus 0 0.750 times 8.5. When you plug numbers in to the equation, you should put parentheses around them. This is a nice one because we don't need to do any algebra. We just have to do the arithmetic. We just got to type that in our calculator. We have to do the order of operations, but our calculator knows that. I recommend using a calculator with buttons, something that you can see what everything you're typing. Um, or you can use Calculate 84, which is a free app on the phone. So 25 plus 0.75, oh, I'll use the parentheses, 25 plus 0 0.750 times 8.50. So it's nice to see everything that I'm typing in so I can check for mistakes. Looks good. The minimum is to do three sig figs, but I'm gonna overachieve, I'm gonna do four sig figs. If you write three sig figs or more, you should be close enough to the answer. Okay, so that's our first. Go on to number two. If you're done writing, go on to number two, see if you can start it. See if you can find out what we're doing on number two. It says, a truck covers 40 meters while smoothly slowing down from 18.5 meters per second to a final velocity of 2.8 meters per second. Find the acceleration of the truck. This one is pretty 
simply put. They say 40 meters. I don't even need to read any context. I know that that is going to be the displacement. It goes a distance of 40 meters. That's the same thing as displacement. All smoothly slowing down. It goes from this speed to this speed. So that means that they are initial and final respectively. And finally, they ask us, find the acceleration of the truck. Let's see if we can pick the equation. I'll, I'll kind of number them. We got one, two, three, four. What's it going to be? Blow up the chat. One, two, three, or four. Two. Looking for two. So here's the one. Very good. <coughs> so here we go. 2.80 squared equals 18.5 squared plus 2a40. And at this point, if you get this far, you're really only getting half credit. You have to do your algebra perfectly until the end. You got to remember to use your unit in the end, and you got to remember to put a negative sign if appropriate, which might be the case here. We'll find out. So simplify by squaring this in your calculator, squaring this in your calculator, and even though the A is in between here, we could take 2 times 40. I've got the answer somewhere. Here they are. All right. So it's 7.84 on the left. 342.3. You could also just do 343. We want three sig figs or more. Plus 80A. And now we, sim we solve. We can't add these because there's an A here. They are unlike terms. There's no A here, so we can't combine it with the A. We'll subtract 342.3. So that on the left, we get negative 334.3. And on the left, I'm mean on the right, this cancels, so we're left with 80A. And we divide by 80. So it looks like we will get a negative answer. And that's because our velocity is becoming more negative. Usually a negative acceleration means that it's slowing down, and that'll be the case for most of the rest of this class. Just to beat a dead horse here, three sig figures or more, negative 4.18 is fine. And if you're close, if you got like negative 4.16, negative 4.20, you're solid. We wanna be within like 5% of the answer. And that concludes the, the easy part, what I call the easy part of the test. Took, it's taken us 10 minutes so far to do this, uh, and I think you guys will be able to complete it in 10 as well. The reason we're going to get 40 minutes for this thing is because the third problem is pretty heavy. I think the concepts are easy, but you might run into issues with your math. You might have to redo your algebra once or twice. So that's why I want to give you as much time as possible on it. So let's hop to it. This is much like the, we did a problem where two knights are charging at one another. This is, this is basically the same problem. 
So here it goes. It says, add a demolition derby, a pickup truck, <clears throat> and a sedan. Begin at rest with 37 meters of space between them. The pickup truck accelerates at a rate of 3.9 meters per second squared, while the sedan accelerates at a rate of 4.6 meters per second squared left because of the negative. Calculate the location of their collision. So let's draw and then we'll talk about it. What I want you to think about is location of their collision. Which variable is that? Is that VF? Is that T? It's going to be a little bit of a trick. So as we're labeling this, try to think about what do, what do they mean? What mathematical letter can we use to represent final location? So there's a beautiful truck. Uh, it's going to be 37 meters away. Is it 37? Yes, 37 meters away from a sedan. We were also given the acceleration. If you got comments about what they mean by location of their collision, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Otherwise, we will talk about something else first. Looks like nothing. So there's a couple more things I can label. Um, what else do you see in this problem? There's two more things that we know. Well, kind of just one. What is there? Yeah, there we go. Rest equals zero. Um, since they're from rest, the initial equals zero. So the unique thing about this problem is that we have two different sets of information. We've got information for the truck. We've got information for the sedan. So we've got to keep those separate. Um, and another problem is that we, we'd only have two numbers each. So we've got to do something with this 37, and it all has to do with the fact that they're asking for location. And uh, it's none of these. Let's see, what are the letters we use? None of these mean location, but one of these involves location to a degree. Yeah, so it's going to be here. Um, pretty close. Anyone? It's this is something minus p minus p. It's pf minus po. So yeah, you got you got the right idea. So basically, the next part. Uh, let's see if I can think of a logical way to put it. Why are we using that equation? Because we look for time. So basically what we got to do is we got to set PF equal to one another. So we need to use this equation. So this is kind of a part that, this is the part of physics where people always ask, how did you know to do that? And the reason physics is so hard is that there isn't really an answer every single time. Um, but basically I knew to do that because we're trying to find PF and the thing about both of these cars is they will have the same PF. So I'm going to write the equation like this. PF equals PO plus VOT plus one half AT squared. Are you lost? If so, just circle that. That's where you will start when you take this quiz. And what we're doing is we're trying to find the place where 
they collide. We want to, like their PFs are going to be equal. PFT equals PFS. The final position of the truck is equal to the final position of the sedan. And so we're taking this equation and we're going to set them equal to one another. So I'm going to write out the equation and then we'll figure out what to plug in. Or maybe we should figure out, yeah, let's just do it. So PO plus VOT plus one half AT squared equals PO plus VOT plus one half AT squared. But what's important is this left hand side is for the truck and this right hand side is for the sedan. And we know pretty much everything. You guys said VO is zero, so that's gonna go away. VO is zero for both of them. So that's nice, that cleans things up a little bit. And the only thing to address is these. So what you need to do is establish a number line. We need to know where are they located? Well, there's no number line here, so I'll draw one in. In physics, you kind of get to choose. You need to like, you lay a number line wherever it seems appropriate, like right here. This is zero on my number line, and I can count one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, five, six, seven, blah, 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 all the way until he's here. That's 37 meters. So you can kind of place the number line wherever you want. Here's what it would look like backwards. If this is position zero, if I, if I slid the number line over here, so that zero is right there, what position would this be at? If this was position zero, what would that position be? Yeah, negative 37. Very good, very good. So long story short, this will be zero. This will be 37. The sedan is at 37. And if you did those opposite, if you did negative 37 and you did zero, you still get the right answer. So here's where it gets tricky. The algebra gets a little bit tough, but we're gonna delete a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna skip all that. It's one half times 3.9 times T squared equals 37 plus one half times negative 4.6 times T squared. Okay, we'll simplify, we'll type that in our calculators. Simplify, type that in our calculators and then rewrite. So it's 1.95 T squared equals 37 minus 2.3 T squared. That's 1.95 T squared equals 37 minus 23 T squared. We'll add that to both sides. Try not to depend, to depend on my visuals here. Try to do this on your own. See if you can complete it by yourself because you'll have to eventually. Okay, so we'll have 4.25 T squared equals 37. So much algebra. Divide both sides by 4.25. I'm not going to show it. It's getting too messy. So we'll divide the left side by 4.25. It'll cancel that 4.25. We'll divide the right side by 4.25. And that 37 will become 8.706. We square root. Take a break. When you're taking the test, once you get here, you better check your math. Also, you should probably practice this math over the weekend or on Monday night, because we'll test on this on Tuesday.
So you could just run through this same problem again, and you'll be reminded of little things. And we're almost done. The question asks, where? Calculate the, no, 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 no. Calculate the location of their collision. So that means PF. We'll plug the time into this one, or we'll plug the time into this one. No matter which one we plug it into, we'll get the same answer. You could even do both to check your answer. If you plug it into both, you should get the same number. So here we go. PF equals zero plus zero plus one half, 3.9, oof, 2.951 squared. Wow, super tough problem, honestly. I, I think, well, the physics is not really that tough. This this is all this is physics, and the rest is just math. It's all algebra. Once again, I recommend you at least start here and see if you can do the algebra again. Probably Monday night would be a good idea, um, and then you'll be solid for the test.